people collapsing and dying has become a commonplace occurrence in our society today and the number seems growing. What comes to me first when someone collapses in my presence is how such can be saved before asking what the problem is or what caused the situation. And I am convinced that that's also topmost on the minds of the people around willing to help the situation. But how much process of this rescue mission do people know of in order to rightly administer it? Is it the time to sprinkle or pour water or olive oil or speak in tongues on the one on the ground? So what should be the first thing to do? And what are the subsequent actions to be taken in such a situation? Welcome to Talking Health with Bumi, and thanks for keeping the date with me. To enlighten us on this critical subject is Dr. Femi Ogunremi, the MD CEO at Monitor Healthcare Limited. He will take us through what we need to do when faced with such a situation that is talking about cardiopulmonary resuscitation, known as CPR. So let me quickly introduce Dr. Goremi to you. He's a multiple award-winning medical doctor turned medpreneur. This trailblazer is combining his passion for healthcare with entrepreneurial spirit to revolutionize the way healthcare is administered, managed, and experienced. Having practiced in the UK and Europe as a general practitioner, Dr. Goremi is now back in Algeria as a medical educator and advocate of resuscitation skills and our quality improvement of care given in hospitals and the good management of the hospitals can be entrenched. Thanks, doctor, for allowing us into your space. Now, today we're here to talk about, it's, it gives me concern. Every now and then, you hear one Nigeria slum today, one people perceive to be very healthy. That means it can happen to anybody. So in order for people to be well aware and educated about this, I decided, why not do something extensive about, you know, this issue? So I want to start by saying, why exactly do people slum, you know, unexpectedly? Yeah, so uh, slumping has become a huge problem in our society lately. There are a lot of reasons. Uh, I think common things I can talk about are you know, most times they are health related. The, the, the an average Nigerian don't usually bother about, you know, health check. Mm -hmm. And just like our, you know, mechanical uh, instruments mm -hmm. that we need to service and take care of, we don't take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we do stuff and we do it repeatedly. Um, despite the fact that things might be wrong in our body, we don't check it. So uh, the last result is for the brain to be starved of oxygen and when there's this you know starvation of oxygen in the brain somebody will feel you know uh, dizzy and they can slump so people can slump and uh, that can lead to you know obviously collapses and things that has to be done about it and this has been happening in the country uh, incessantly and i've seen a lot of cases in the past few you know it's been a few months maybe in the next past one year now there have been a lot of cases of people slumping and people dying from collapses like this. So, to, to summarize it, it could be a health-related issue, especially if something happened to the heart, not pumping blood effectively. It could be something happened to the lungs, no pump. I mean, not getting enough oxygen to the to the body, and that can be diseases or other things. Okay, I also know, doctor, that many a times some people slump but they don't die. Yeah. There's something they call, I've heard it over time, and as an adult, it's here with us, they call it CPR. You doctors know mm -hmm. better. What exactly, tell my viewers, what exactly is CPR and why is it so important in saving lives? Okay, CPR is an acronym for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. As I said earlier on, there could be problem with the lung and there could be problem with the heart mm -hmm. that can lead to somebody to, you know, to collapse. Mm -hmm. And so what, what CPR, which is cardio, means something to do with the heart, mm. pulmonary, any time we hear that means something to do with the lungs. Resuscitation means, you know, jump-starting these organs. I see, like so, the car. Like the car, okay. exactly. So when somebody is slump or collapsed, then you could jump-start them to be 
you know, to come back to life. Yeah. Uh, on the average, you know, the brain will survive about five minutes without oxygen. Um, if we don't do something within that time, people die, you know, and they can't come back. In fact, uh, CPR is being, it's very, very important for the whole, for everyone, you know, to know about it because research has shown that if we can resuscitate people within one to two minutes of collapses, if we all know how to do these resuscitation skills, then about 60, more than 60% of the people who are dead today will be alive. It's quite staggering. Uh, and that's in Europe. If you then look at Nigeria, where we have other things going on other than the general, you know, non-communicable diseases, we still have communicable diseases that we're battling. That's right. Um, as a road traffic accident and trauma is still there killing our people, then you can realize, you can do the math, the number of people that probably had dead now that should have been alive mm. if we all know this thing. So it is an important thing for us to know. Okay, so I want to ask at this stage, um, is this anybody that can perform CPR or does it require special training? You know, CPR requires to be, we need to be trained. If you know what's going on in Nigeria today, mm. the kind of CPR that we do to our people is quite, you know, frightening. We don't do much. We Even in the hospital, I don't think we do much. We don't support people at all. But anyone could do basic life support mm. which is the cpr in quote so what that means is you're mechanically keeping this person alive until they get to a place where they can get permanent help so you pump their chest okay. and then you give them you know if it's appropriate you give them some you know what they call the keys of life mm. mouth to mouth and then you continue on a certain rate that I'll probably discuss later. Mm. If you continue to do this, you're just mechanically keeping this person alive without any equipment. That is basic life support. And that is uh, what anyone can do as long as you have some energy to push down on the chest. <music> The life, the pure many wish they were. I define what premium means to most and still define me. Every royalty asks of me. Dignitaries drink me with no question. I am not loud so you won't find me in traffic. Seated at momentous ceremonies, but serious events and premium parties only. I am exclusive. With an unmissable presence in over 40 countries, I am global. I am the life of every occasion and gathering. I am Nestle Pure Life. Without any introduction, I am the life of the party. effective is this an emergency situation for instance i don't know anything about cpr okay. okay so if i walk into on the street or in an office or even at home and you find someone lying suddenly on the floor on this or on the street yeah. what is the, what am i supposed to do okay so the first thing you need to be alive yourself some if somebody is down there's a reason why they're down mm -hmm. and that reason why they're down can bring you down so I always say something, you, there's one time in my life that I will advise you to be selfish. If you find somebody in a situation that is, you know, uh, critical, mm -hmm. don't jump at them. Somebody could have touched an electricity and then they shock and then you go there and you mm -hmm. rush and touch them. There will be two people to be resuscitated. Oh, so the first thing is to look around, make sure that your safe environment is safe and it's safe to touch this person. Mm. So once you touch them, you then need to do the necessary thing to check whether they actually collapse. Mm -hmm. First thing is to talk to them, you mm -hmm. call them, mm -hmm. then you have to tap them, and then you check whether they're breathing. I'll, I'll show you how to do okay. this in a sec. So you check whether they're, able to, uh, whether they're breathing, and if they're not breathing, and there's evidence of collapses, then you have to do something now. And that's what CPR will bring. Okay, now doctor, I've seen a lot of situations where, whether in movies or in reality, someone just slums and you see people gathering around, pouring water, putting olive oil. Okay, so 
What should the environment of someone that is just slum, what should the environment, ideal environment be like? Okay, it's interesting what the, your question because if you look at what operates in Nigeria, like I said earlier on, uh, a lot of the time somebody slum, what we tend to do is to we keep shouting when we, we we start doing stuff and it does it's not effective for mm. the you know for the for, for, for this person because mm. we're not doing the right thing. Some people will they will start beating people, they start pointing things in their mouths and doing all sorts of things. Those are dangerous things to do. Um you see some people they sit on somebody's chest and then say, open his mouth, do this and that everybody mm. is shouting. Mm. They're not effective and they're not producing the results. What we need to do is to start a compression you need to get should they out. actually even crowd the person so, so, so because some people have seen situations where somebody some people not, want to raise their head yeah. we're going to carry so the, you know. coordination is a problem we don't coordinate ourselves everybody wants to say i can do in good mind but mm. the thing is people really want to help but they don't know what to do and that's what, what you're doing. I really like it because people need to be enlightened and educated on what they need to do. Shouting, crowding around them is not the solution. Give space. Somebody needs to be there to take charge if it's possible. Hmm. Tell people to do chest compression. Somebody monitor what is going on with the mouth. Make sure they, 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 you open the airway and you give them mouth to mouth if you can and it's safe. And if not, just do you know chest compression okay. only on its own okay. to make sure that you take this person to the hospital. Crowding around, shouting, pushing, and all that, putting olive oil or something like that doesn't it doesn't do anything. We can't even sprinkle water because sometimes they say cold water can bring the person back alive. A lot of there are a lot of things that people say here. That's, that's a myth. Right, so we'll talk about myths later. Right. Okay, so I've also heard about AED. Yeah. You know, please can you explain that? Very well AED just. is automated external defibrillator. So for the heart, um, the heart has the muscle and has the electrical component as well, which are the nerves that wraps around the heart, which allows the heart to pump. And then sometimes the problem with the heart could be from the muscle or from the blood vessels where there's a clot or something like that causing the heart to stop. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes the problem could be in the electrical components. Mm -hmm. So AED is a jump starter okay. or is an electrical jump starter so you shock the heart mm. when we shock it with the aed it then allows the heart to jump start can this be done together with cpr it's part of the CPR. basic life support where cpr is there okay and then there's the support using the aed okay if can an untrained person do administer AED? No, no, no. You have to okay. be trained. Oh, uh, because when you shock somebody, you want them to be alive. You could shock somebody. That same thing that you used to shock somebody to be alive can shock somebody to kill them. I watch a lot of action movies, actually. So, I've seen AED bring people back to life. Yeah. Is, it, is that really, really true? It's just that movie. It's very, very real. It, I've, I brought a lot mm. of people back to life with AED in my lifetime. Ooh. A lot. Okay, so... There is virtually nothing in Nigeria that doesn't have meats. And one of the meats is just what I discussed earlier. When somebody faints, in quote, the first thing we want to sprinkle water, you know. So what are some, by your experience, what are some myths you have come across, you know, in this CPR issue, resuscitating people? Yeah, I think there's a, there are a lot of myths around CPR. I think a few, some of them that I know is people saying that maybe uh, somebody claps and instead of you to help them, you think somebody from the family has done something to them, you understand? And then let's pray against that and people start praying. Mm. Uh, it's okay to pray, but we pray sensibly to be honest. That's we right. pray and do the work. Mm -hmm. So if we want to pray, we can pray, but we need to also do what we need to do. Uh, sprinkling water on people. Uh, somebody is collapsed, you're pouring water on them. The only thing that you're doing is you're killing them, to be honest. I mean, pouring water in their mouth or you're putting, putting things inside their mouth mm. when they collapse. They will just aspirate and they will die, basically. This is very important. Looking at the rate at which people slow in our country now. So where do you think people can actually get training or get trained for CPR? And how long does it take? Okay, so that's what I do. Um, okay. I do done a lot in this country and I believe it's what all of us need. It's, 
we need to put <laughs> online that to be on deck because mm. the scope is massive. Mm. Um, so we do it in monitor healthcare. Um, obviously, it takes about depending on how many people about four to six hours okay. to be trained. Okay. Um, in our training, you will do we do the you know the the physical training okay. or, or virtual training okay. and after that you then learn how to manually do all this thing okay. and how to use AED effectively okay. and um, you will then assess you after to make sure that you could do it you know properly and it's advisable that we repeat this thing so that we, we, we don't get rusty and we mm. can use it at the right time. We repeat it every year but the certificate we give you will be like three years certification okay. uh, to be a provider okay. uh, of uh, basic life support. So please talk, so can you just put us through the process of CPR and AED? Okay, that's fine. So uh, just like I said earlier on, if somebody collapses, the first thing is you want to make sure that the environment is safe. So you look around, if there's anything that is, you know, uh, dangerous, you have to deal with. For example, this person might have, you know, uh, falling, bang their head, they might have slipped and banged their head, they might have uh, touched an electricity and electrocuted. So you need to be sure, be safe first. So when you're safe, then you approach them and talk, talk to them. So we have two ears, you call them, hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? So the two things can happen. They can tell you, oh, 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 oh and they sleep off again. If that happens, just like you said earlier on, it means that they're, they're breathing. So you put them in recovery position okay and then if you're in recovery position you wait until whoever is going to help comes and take them to the hospital for full care now if they do not answer you that means they're not hearing you so the next thing is you want to touch them and see whether when you touch them they do oh, oh, oh. if they then answer you again you put them in recovery position so that they do not aspirate okay but if you tap them and they do not you know respond that means they are not responding then the next thing is you want to check whether they are breathing. So you tilt their head and lift their shin, what we call healthy shin lift. Then you look, listen and feel for breathing for 10 seconds. So you count for 10 seconds, one and two and three and four and five and six. You count like that until okay. 10, seconds. 10 seconds. So if you, you, you're, you, when you're doing that, you're listening whether you can hear them breathe. Mm -hmm. You're looking whether the chest is rising and falling and then you want to see whether you feel them breathe on your cheeks, yeah. okay? So you look, listen, and feel for breathing for 10 seconds. Okay. So if they're not breathing, I would always advise you never resuscitate somebody on your own. You need to call someone at this stage. So you shout out, call for help, ask somebody to, to come and call more people to come to you. And they, when they're coming, they should bring AED. Okay. So once you've done that, if the AED is available, once you've done that, then you come back to this person and then you need to start chest compression. When you want to do the chest compression, you need to look at the, at the chest, okay? The individual will have two nipples. Yes. So you look at the line that joins the two nipples, okay. where it crosses the sternum, okay. the center of the chest. Okay. That's where you're putting your hand and then okay. you start chest compression. Oh. To do the chest compression, you straighten your arm and then you press down. So you're doing this chest compression, you're doing 30 chest compression. After that, then you do two rescue breathing if it's safe. Talking about the rescue breathing, you don't know the status of this person if you don't know them. Right. So you might not want to put your mouth directly in their mouth. If you have things like pocket mask or face shield, you can do. So pocket mask looks like this. If you have your own, then you can just, you know, do that and then put it, you know, uh, on the on the on the you know across their face and then you can blow into it okay that has a filter okay. so you build that but if you don't have you know the opportunity of doing mouth to mouth mm -hmm. or giving the breath mm -hmm. then you might then want to do hands only compression in which okay. case you're just doing the compression like that so you're hearing me for when you are doing the chest compression the idea is to push blood out of the heart fill up again push back fill up push back so you continue to do that continuously that's the compression it has to be deep and it has to be fast mm. 100 to 120 per minute is what you're doing so when you do that uh you continue to do that if you do 30 to 2 30 to 2 you do that until aed comes all right so what i'm saying now is if you're doing 30 to 2 you do you're going at the rate of 100 to 120 in one minute in that rate but you break it 
you know, down to 30. Then you go to rescue breathing, okay. 30. So let's say you've done 30. One, two, three, four, 30. Okay. Two rescue breathing. Okay. 31, 32, 33, 34, 90. Two mm. rescue, I mean, 62, 90, rescue breathing. 61, I mean, 61, 62, 63, 90. Mm -hmm. two, two rescue, rescue. breathing. You continue then, by the time you are doing 120, you assume that will be about an uh, one minute. I see. So in a minute, you're doing 100 to 120. I see. Or in between, you are doing 30, 30, two rescue breathing after the, each 30. I you understand? Okay. When AED arrives, AED is something that looks like this. Whoever brings it because you are, you are busy doing your chest compression, you ask them to help you put it on. So they switch it on. So this is a robot. It will continue to give you information. Okay. So if it's a child, you press child button. So you remove clothing from the patient's chest. This is the packet. It's well signed. What you need to do. In fact, let's, do, let's use this one. So it, it is well signed. Then you just put that. So you remove the you remove the part and look okay. at this one goes okay. here, just below okay. the okay. you know the 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 left side just underneath the um, okay. nipple there, okay. okay. And then this one goes up here, around the heart. Just just above the you know okay. below this the clavicle. Okay. And then you already switch it on. So let's use this one. So you put it on, and then you are hearing whatever is telling you there. So, so when he says he's analyzing heart rhythm, you don't touch the patient. This is electricity. Mm. It's going to discharge electricity to this thing. So do not touch the patient. So if he tells you shock advice, before you press the button here, you have to, it will charge. When it's charging, you stay clear. Don't touch the patient, right? Nobody should touch this person. No matter, no water. So when he says you should press the orange button, don't ever press this orange button until you are sure there's nobody is, that is touching this person. So you look from head to toe. Nobody is touching. When nobody is touching, you are safe. Everybody is safe. Then you press it. It will deliver shock immediately. You go back on the chest. So you start, just follow. You follow that. That's going at the rate that you're expected to go. That's about 100 to 120 mm. per minute. So you just follow from there mm -hmm. until if the person comes around or you're tired or you feel that there's a lot of things that tells you that this person is not going to make it mm -hmm. or you decide among yourself and then you can stop it that way. Terrific. Please give us a final advice on this show today. Um, what do you think people should do when they come in contact or when they suddenly come across someone who suddenly slumps? Well, the final advice for everybody to know what to do in that emergency situation. So this is where actually it touches me to be honest. It's something that is quite emotional for me because I feel we're not doing a lot here and a lot of people are dying for no reason. Hmm. So we need to look at the you know survivor chain. Okay. Uh, how if I ask an individual, what's the chance of you surviving if it collapse wherever you find yourself? Your house, at work, on the road. Mm -hmm. What's the chance of you surviving? You understand? And if we can answer that question honestly, you know that we're not doing anything in this country. So I always advise people to learn how to do it. If, if most of us are able to resuscitate people without any instruments, a lot of people won't be dying. I guess people are just afraid that if I approach and and in the uh, in the situation where I'm administering, and the person dies, then they will charge me. I'll be driven. I'll be dragged to police station. I think we need to do the. If you learn to do, and you do right, if if you, let's say if you do a training, mm -hmm. you will be confident on what to do, mm -hmm. and then you know that you whatever you have done. How done expensive is this training? Uh, it depends on how we're coming in terms of numbers. For it's average about thirty-eight thousand naira. Okay. Um, but there are times if you're close to us, um, people that follow us often, mm -hmm. we give free or we discount sometimes, or we just do that as our own COS. And then I want to talk to the government, and I want to talk to our health profession as well. Okay. For individuals, we all need to find a way of you know. Uh, developing a, a, a chain of survivor around us. So um, we need to learn to do this skill. A skill. We've, it has been 
proven to be effective even if a patient or staff collapsed and we have actually resuscitated and they survived and so if you learn to do these things then chances of survival is higher now for the government um, after we've done whatever we've done in the community and we take the patient to the hospital is the doctor the nurses people in the hospital that also need to do their own bit which is the advanced level and this is where the government need to help to either find a way of getting our doctors to be equipped or our healthcare professionals to be equipped and then to you know uh, be able to support people in cases of collapses uh, for survival and call, improve quality of life. I believe you now know better that should someone slop in your presence, please do not pour water because by doing so you may be sending them farther away from life. Also, check the surrounding to ensure that the fall was not as a result of electrocution. And never ever you jerk the person back to life with the use of automated external defibrillator near water, simply because water is believed to be a conductor for electricity. You got that right? Okay. This is how far we can go on today's edition of Talking Health. Please keep a date with me same time next week for another interesting episode. Feel free to send your questions, comments, or inquiries to the number scrolling or to info at congotv.com. Do not forget to also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like and hit the notification button. You should also follow us on all our social media platforms. Okay? Until next time, think health matters. Think talking health with Bumi. Bye. <music>